All right, this example will be pretty complicated. Um, so this is continuing our look at sketching uh, rational functions. So the first step that we always do is we factor. So this numerator right here will factor to f of x would equal x plus 5, x minus 5, because we have difference of two squares right here, x plus 5, x minus 5, and then we have the 2x minus 1 already. So then we would have down here, I'm going to factor this off to the side, we have a greatest common factor of an x, so that would leave us with x squared minus 2x minus 8. So then we would have to factor that more. We want to multiply to negative 8, add to negative 2, so that would be uh, x minus 4, x plus 2 is how that would break down. So all together it's x x minus 4, x plus 2. So now that we have it fully factored, we can start breaking it down. So let's look at our list. Horizontal asymptote, we'll start there. Horizontal asymptotes, bobo, bot, and HTC. So bigger on bottom, bigger on top, or are the exponents the same? And you can go back to previous videos to see how we apply this bobo, bot, and HTC in more detail. But we have, we have to do some work here. So if we look back at the original function, we need the degree of the numerator. The degree of the denominator is easy. It's degree 3. It has an exponent of 3 here. It's multiplied out. This one is actually partially factored. So we have to figure out what would the biggest degree term be. Well, we would get that by multiplying x squared times 2x. So that would give us on top a 2x cubed on top. And then the biggest degree term on bottom is an x cubed. So this is what we look at for our bobo bot and each DC. So this is exponents are the same. We have a 3 here and a 3 here. The biggest exponents are the same. So we divide their coefficients. This is a coefficient of 2. This is an implied 1 as the coefficient there. So 2 divided by 1 is 2. So our horizontal asymptote is y equals 2. So a little more difficult than some of the other examples to get that. Vertical asymptotes occur. Uh, from factors in the denominator that do not cancel and actually none of these factors in the denominator cancel so all three of them give us vertical asymptotes so we have vertical asymptotes at x equals 0, 4, and negative 2 so x equals 0 from that factor x equals positive 4 from that factor and x equals negative 2 from that factor remember between your factors and your uh, solutions here, your vertical asymptotes in this case, when you solve this, uh, for example, they're going to be opposite signs. So if we take the x minus 4, set it equal to 0, add 4 to both sides, x equals 4. So that's just a reminder that between these factors and what you're writing here, the signs will always be opposite. So just a reminder there. All right, holes in the graph. Her holes in the graph occur. Let's look at our list. Holes occur when factors cancel between the numerator and denominator. We determined none of them canceled, so there are none for holes in the graph. Roots, let's look at our list. Roots come from factors in the numerator at the top that do not cancel with factors in the denominator. Again, this list, all my students have it. If you're a student that's not in my class, you can screenshot this, and this will really help you breaking down these rational function problems. So roots, factors in the numerator that didn't cancel. So all of these factors in the numerator didn't cancel, so each one gives us a root. So we have a root of negative 5 from that factor. So x equals negative 5. We have a root of, um, let me get, undo that circle there. So x equals positive, uh, pardon me, negative 5 there. X equals positive 5 from that one, so positive 5. And then from this one, we would solve it set it equal to zero and solve, we would add one, divide by two, so positive one-half is that root. Y-intercept occur, uh, the y-intercept occurs when x is zero, so we need to evaluate f of zero, so that would be zero plus five, zero minus five, and two times zero would be zero minus one, over zero times zero minus four, times 0 plus 2. Well, we can already tell from this, look, we have a 0 right here that we're multiplying by. That makes the denominator 0. Can't do that. That's undefined. Therefore, there will be no y-intercept. You should also 
We'll write none. You should also realize that we can't have a y-intercept because we have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero. That means we never cross the x-axis, uh, pardon me, the y-axis because of that vertical asymptote on top of the y-axis. So there cannot be a y-intercept. The domain is anything that x cannot equal anything that gives us a vertical asymptote or a hole in the graph. So that would be x cannot equal zero four or negative two. That's all of these right here. All right, so now to start the sketch in this, we've got a lot of work to do here. So, start our sketch. Start by putting in our horizontal asymptote y equals two across here. So that's at two. We have verticals at four out here. Vertical at zero. I need to remember that one's there. Sometimes it's easy to forget because the y-axis is there. And then y equals negative two right here. Actually, let's just get rid of this part. Right here while we're at it. Get it out of our way. Okay, so put that vertical asymptote in it, uh, negative two. All right, now for roots, we'll do those in blue. So we have roots at negative five over here. We have a root at positive five, that would be right there. We have a root at one half, so that would be right there. All right, and then no y-intercept, so that's everything that we know. So what we do know from this is we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sections where we can have graph, okay? Eight sections, because the asymptotes split this into eight sections. So again, this one's fairly complicated. So let's go to work and figure this thing out. So let's start at the far right and far left, because those are easy, because our end behavior says we must approach this horizontal asymptote at the far left and far right. So those sections are usually the easiest. It's the middle ones that get complicated. So that means, based on the fact that we have a root here and a vertical asymptote here, horizontal asymptote here, this must look this way. It has to approach that vertical asymptote somewhere, and it's got to go through that root, and it has to approach the horizontal asymptote at the far right. So it must be here. It had to be here or where it's at and it couldn't be up in this section because we have the root right here. So it had to be uh, in that section. Now over here, similarly, we have graph either here or here, one of the two sections, but based on where that root is, it must be like this. It's gotta approach that vertical asymptote, has to go through that root, and it has to approach the horizontal asymptote as x goes to negative infinity. Those are the rules, so that has to look that way. Okay, so now we have the middle four sections. It can get a little difficult here. So this one will be the probably be the easier one because we have a root to go through. So I know that I, based on where that root is in this vertical asymptote at the y-axis, I have to be like this. Now what I don't know is do I curve back down here or do I slice through the horizontal, which is okay in the middle to slice through the horizontal and approach the vertical this way. So it's one of the two, I don't know which. So what I'm going to do is evaluate the function when x equals four. If I get a point up here, then it's gonna be like this. If I get a point down here, then it's going to drop like that. So evaluate the function when x equals four. So I'm going to uh, do that now and we'll see where. All right, so this was our original function. So f of four would be equal to um, actually we don't want to use four because that's where the asymptote was. So let's not do that. So let's use three instead. My bad on that. So we'll evaluate f of three. If we evaluate f of four, it'd be undefined. All right, so f of three, continuing on, using our function here. So that would be three plus five times three minus five, and two times three is six minus one. That's the numerator over three times the quantity three minus four times the quantity three plus two. We don't have to be perfectly exact here. We just need to get a rough idea. Is it down here in negative or is it up here in positive? If we know that, that's going to be good enough in this case. So 
So that's where the sine analysis comes in. Is it positive or negative? So that would be 8 times negative 2 times 5 over 3 times 3 minus 4 is negative 1. 3 plus 2 is 5. So on top we have negative 80. On bottom we have uh, negative 15. So that produces a positive number of 5 point something. Negative 80 divided by negative 15 is 5 point something. So that's enough. I don't need to be specific about it. It's somewhere right up in here. So that tells me that the graph has to look like this. So that was the sign analysis. It wasn't a negative number down here. It was just positive. That was enough to tell me it, it should be up here. And it was above the uh, horizontal asymptote of 2. All right, now for this section right here. So I either have to be somewhere in here or somewhere in here. So I just need a test point. One way of looking at this is uh, in sign analysis or find a test point. So I'm going to evaluate the function when x is negative 1. So let's go back down here, use our function here when x is negative 1. So f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 plus 5, negative 1 minus 5, and negative 2 minus 1. 2 times negative 1 gives me negative 2 right here. Over negative 1 times negative 1 minus 4 times negative 1 plus 2. So that would be um, 4 times negative 6 times negative 3 over negative 1 times negative 1 minus 4 negative 5 and negative 1 plus 2 is 1. So let's see that would be uh, 24 uh, negative 8, uh, positive 18 times 4 is going to be uh, 72 over negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5 times 1 is 5 so 72 over 5 so let's see what would that be 14 uh, point something so it's a value of 14 so that means it has to be up here somewhere 14 so based on that it it can't be um, down here like this so it's got to be in this section and I know it can't be shaped like this so it's got to be shaped like this so that was I'll do that in blue and that's all the sections of the graph covered and there is nothing else to do because we've graphed in all the sections so that one's pretty difficult alright that's it for this video